You know, my whole plane was all strippers. It was okay. me and a bunch of strippers. All right. <laughs> Somehow we got onto that topic we we're trying to avoid. <laughs> uh, no, that wasn't sex. That was dance. Okay. We were talking about dance. It's art. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're talking about tableside etiquette. We have Patricia, the founder and president of the Etiquette School of New York. And we have Dee, one of the best hosts in the history of Vice Host. So Dee, let's get a little background history. Okay. How deeply involved are you in the world of fine dining? I have been to a couple different restaurants and I feel like I could defend myself. What kind of people generally are uh, hire you for your services, like who do you teach? I meet with all kinds of people. I meet with uh, university students. I have corporate groups, um, new hires. Sometimes summer interns are coming in. They want to give them etiquette training. And I have many private students. I have a, once a month I have a finishing school for adults. I know a few uh, basic fundamentals. Mm -hmm. You know, chew with your mouth closed. Mm -hmm. No elbows on the table. Ask for things to be passed. You don't reach across the table. Even if you're gifted with an extremely long arm, that's only to be used to tickle people across the room. <laughs> right. Cell phones off, unless you have children or you're a drug dealer. Mm, okay. So elbows off the table, actually, at a formal dinner, which we're having today, right? We're having yeah. a formal dinner. I tell my students, if you're at a bar, you have a date, you're leaning across the table to hear the other person, that's fine. Posture's everything. Body language is important. If there's a conversation, take, you know, part in it. Even if you're not concerned, pretend. It's the American way. Like, what can you talk about in a, in a fine dining environment? Like, what are you not supposed to talk about? Because I talk about everything. I would say, one, what's the number one topic that we should avoid almost anywhere? Sex? Well, I would call that number three or four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would call politics, politics number one. Uh, politics and religion. Yes, politics, religion, money, sex. So what's left? Nothing good. The weather? <laughs> People like to talk about the weather. There's yes, always like a go-to. Yes, but we can't. So what about cultural events? Arts, culture. You think about the people you're going to be eating with and what they might be interested in talking about. Sometimes for young people, if they're graduating from college, they have meals to as part of the interview process. They're tested to see how they conduct themselves. And it's not just how they eat, it's, it's what they talk about, how they treat the wait staff, because that's how they're going to treat their colleagues, probably. So let's talk about table settings. What do we have here? Well, this is one of the, the first things you should learn when you're talking about dining etiquette is how to read a table setting. Because number one, it will tell you what you're having to eat if you don't have a menu card. Just by looking at this, we know, for instance, you see the small fork versus the, the larger fork? Mm -hmm. It means we're going to have our salad first because it's on the outside. Most upscale restaurants in the city will have two knives, two forks, because I assume you're going to have at least two courses. In Europe, they have their salads last after the main course. Mm -hmm you would be eating your entree first, then your salad. Very important thing, which is to know that your bread plate's on the left and your drinks are on the right. Now, and this is the bread basket. Yes, that's what they call it when it's a little big. Right in the bread basket. <laughs> a little so, big. So she played what kind of etiquette is that? <laughs> I didn't say yours was big, I just said that's what they call it when one stomach is a little big. I like yeah, that. she's the best. <laughs> this is what I taught grown-ups, BMW, bread, main, water. So would you like to pass the rolls? You can take one first. I've never been so afraid to pick a bread. Take one. I know I should take one, but I believe in ladies first. Actually, you'll take one next, and then you can. Oh, man. But that's nice of you, actually. I'll, I'll accept. You're going to deny my chivalry? I'll accept. Thank you very much. <laughs> I might hold the door yes, next. You don't know true. what's going on. That's true. I might throw my jacket on a puddle. I'm getting crazy. And then we can pass the butter. The first thing we would have done, we won't touch this bread. It looks so good, though. And we won't have water until we have our napkins on our lap. Uh, that I know. Okay, so napkin on the lap. Now, our host, we should follow our host. You're our host, right? I am. So you put the napkin on your lap first, and then we put it on our laps. You put yours in a triangle. I put mine in a rectangle mm -hmm. with the open part toward the table. Very good, very good. As soon as someone's finished, they think they just put the napkin on the table. No. No. no, no. Never goes on the table until our host gives the signal and puts it on his lap and says it's time to go, all right? If you have to go to the restroom, you put it on your chair. Okay. Napkins to be unseen, it's like a hidden agenda. No eyesores on the table, Absolutely. only beauty. You wanna show us how to eat the roll? I'd love to show you how to eat the roll. And it's not a course though. You're what right. does that mean? 
That means that it, it, it doesn't belong. That's right. Yeah. I just get so excited. It's just so yes, warm and flaky. Yes, I know. You're not the only know? one. So we break it right, right down the center. Yes. And then you only break as much as you can eat in one bite. Well, I have a big mouth. Well. <laughs> and you butter one bite. This is one bite. That's not one bite. It's like three bites. Have you seen this jawline? The knife goes right on the bread plate, just like so, okay? Once you've used a piece of silverware, it never goes back on the table. <laughs> I just wanted you to do your job. I wanted to give you something to correct. <laughs> tell us what I did wrong. Why don't you tell us what you, well you can't speak for five minutes, mm. okay. What kind of soup are we having today, do you know? Butternut squash, one of my favorites. Mm. Oh, that smells amazing. I know. Okay, now there are a couple things about your utensils. The way you use it, the way you place it in your bowl plate tells the wait staff whether you're resting or finished. And it's supposed to be the silent service code, mm. uh, which means they won't ask you if you're resting or finished. So that we can have our conversation and they aren't interrupting. Oh wow, the SSC. Yes. I have a question. Is it inappropriate to eat soup with your left hand? I'm left-handed and I'm just way more comfortable doing that. If you're left-handed, you absolutely eat with your left hand. Everything I tell you will be the mere opposite for left-handed people. So for you, it will be like this. Got it. Now, so eating soup is a four-step motion. It's the only time the utensil goes away from us. We go one, okay. You see that drip? Mm -hmm. Two, and you didn't get that drip. My drip is more like a river. You didn't get it. <laughs> you see this drip? Straight up and then from the side. It tastes as good as it smells. Mm -hmm. So resting, it's obvious, it's there. And then when I'm finished, I'll place it on the service plate. Well, I enjoy dipping my bread in soup. Uh -huh, well, you that can't do not that. a thing? That's something that I really <laughs> like to do. What if you sneak a little bread crumble in, like you drop it in, and then take it in the form of If no one of... sees, I guess you can do that. Yeah, sneak a little bread in there. Come Yo, on, break a little bread, there, right? a little bread in there. Why don't we dab our mouth while we're waiting for the next course? Now, to use the napkin, we just go one, two, okay. Okay, we just, so we don't wipe, we just like that. Question, I often apply lip gloss. Is that something you should not be doing at the dinner table? You should not. No, you should not be doing that. We would like to step away and go to the restroom and then... No grooming at the table. Okay, okay. That's and I'm happy no to see... No exceptions to that. And I'm happy to see no phones at the table. Oh, oh that's very important. So how do we hold our knives and forks? Is your fork here? It should rest on the index finger and the base should be in the center of your palm. Same thing with your knife. So then we turn it over. I eat continental style, but I think I'll eat American style. So I'm gonna cut it and then I'm gonna put my knife there with the blade facing in. And now, because I'm eating American style, my hand is in my lap. Uh -huh. Very good. Mm -hmm. If I were to go on an interview and I can't order, you know, a soup or a salad, what is something that I should order? Or like, what's something good to order? Always order the easiest thing to eat that you eat with a knife and fork. Okay. So like for instance, like if there's chicken on the menu, don't order roast chicken on the bone. No. Order the breast of chicken. Okay, some chicken tenders. <laughs> well, go I, I don't know, there could be. Those are easy to eat. You cut them with a knife and fork, right? Okay. Sometimes you're, you're, the course is already ordered and you can't, don't have a choice. Mm. So you'll do your best. Now the reason our blades face in is because the first utensils at the table that the French ate with were daggers. Mm. They ate with really? their daggers. So it was kind of intimidating to see the blade. See, these are the stories I like to hear. I like to know the evolution of right. etiquette. Facing the other person, they said, let's point them this way you know, toward you, you, that it always goes in, okay? So for continental, this is resting. So continental, I do a little twist, just like this. Uh -huh. That was amazing wrist movement. The That's continental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're finished with your salad, or your main course, because we're using a knife and fork, for American style right-handed people, it's knife on top, Fork on the bottom, up. Remember, because American style, you're eating with it up. Continental, eating with it down, it goes down on the plate. So that says, I'm finished. You know what? I kind of like to eat American style with a continental wrist. Am I allowed to do that? Because <laughs> I don't really like the hands on the lap. Like, I, I have big arms, I have big shoulders. Like, it's, it's a lot. I feel, I feel restrained. <laughs> you, you look know? very timid. Like, yeah, waiting. yeah. <laughs> so, I like to eat American style, but I like a continental wrist game. You know the difference, you decide. Lovely. Thank you. Okay, well, our host is picking up his knife and fork. Well, because although I'm a host, there was, there was somewhat of a mix-up 
because I don't eat pork at all. So what would I do in this in this scenario? I don't Show either. Me how to use proper I etiquette. don't either. So I'm going to pretend. Okay. Sure. I mean, because there's nothing else to eat, right? Let's pretend. You can eat the roll, though. Just for to set an example. I don't know if this is a good example. I hate to be difficult. You know what? We don't want to make it an issue in front of other people. Ideally, you wouldn't come Ideally, to the table. You would, you would say something That's before. Right. Uh, this is the best pork chop I've ever seen right here. <laughs> With a gentle incision. Right. And notice that the knife... Were you a surgeon in your past life? No. That and was I such never... a delicate incision. Oh, was that nice? <laughs> Thank you so much. So the knife is right here. Just do a nice little delicate touch. And obviously, that's too big of a bite, right? So I have to cut it again. You're supposed to, you know, you roll. Remember we said we pinch a piece off? Same thing with meat. We cut one bite at a time. And then I spear it with my fork, use this, and I do a little twist like that, okay? If I'm eating continental. Otherwise, I'll put my fork down and switch my fork, and I'll spear it just like that. The texture of these green beans are amazing. I hate, I hate nothing more than overcooked vegetables. These are perfect. If we're like sharing a story, let's say that I'm like in the middle of talking and I'm not realizing that I have these in my hand, like should I always put them down? Or yes, is it okay always, to yes. Have them? After every three bites, you put them down and you rest a little bit, digest, maybe take your water and, and talk a little bit. Now, could you pass this salt, please? Okay, first of all. I knew you were setting me up to do something wrong. <laughs> oh, you, don't you didn't even want the salt. The salt and pepper are passed together. They're married. Ah, that makes sense. They're never separated. It's crazy because it's the opposite with money. I feel if someone puts money on the table and not in my hand, that's disrespectful. Maybe it's just me. But if I'm at a register, hand me my change. Don't put it down. Right. I agree with you about that. I think that's rude, too. If we had a full table with people and we only had one salt and pepper shaker and that person, the salt's there, the pepper's there, and that person wants both. See, you have to find them, put them together. Got it. So they stay together. It looks this fire. Is, this is great. You just don't eat pork. It looks fire, though. It's amazing. Excuse me. I shouldn't be speaking with my mouth full. That's so, right. Yeah. <laughs> First impressions are so hard to change. Exactly. And this is like the ultimate proving ground. Yeah. How you eat, how you carry yourself. That's on. right. That's right. Are we in finished position? So, Dee. What's up? Did you enjoy this dining experience? I really did. I feel like I learned a lot. There were some things that I knew already, but it kind of reinforced it, and you know, things I learned. I'm really glad you guys had me here. Okay. Yeah. Patricia, did you enjoy our company? Absolutely. Be honest. I know I really love meeting new people. Yeah, you tell people what to do. I like it. <laughs> yes, that's what my husband says. Good job for you. You're right. so bossy. So. <laughs> but I hope I did it in a nice way. You did. You did. I don't know about that bread basket, Connor. We'll talk about that. Later. We didn't say it was your. But what they do say a big stomach is the bread basket. Mine's nah. the pasta. Mine's the pasta basket. Is a pasta basket? Is a pasta belly? No, no. I enjoyed. Thank you for having me. Thank it was, you. It was and a uh, pleasure. That concludes our episode of Mind Your Manners. I hope you learned things about etiquette, friendship, laughter, and pork chops. Mm -hmm.